Welcome back to Behind the Lens. I'm your host, custom designer and wardrobe stylist, Jessie. Today we are talking part two of set etiquette. As I always say, people like someone fast, efficient, and thorough. You should be Johnny on the spot. You will be asked to do all sorts of different things, and really it's for your own benefit to learn the department that way. You should constantly ask for another task or another project. There is always something to organize, hang, fold, move, drop off, whatever. You should be just wanting to do more and more and more in the day and being as helpful as you can be to the designer, the supervisor, or the customers. Be mindful of things that are going on in the department, what's coming up, what's being worked on. If something's out of place, bring it up. It might be something that other people missed. If you see a stain on something, ask about it. Maybe it needs to be cleaned. Maybe it needs to stay that way for a particular scene. Just be eyes and ears, listening, watching, looking for everybody in the department. One of your main roles as PA might be receipts. And this is truly the bane of everyone's existence, but receipts are so important and they are such a major part of the department. We have to track, of course, every penny that goes out and comes back from returns for our budget. And therefore, all the returns have to be properly documented. There's a form that we use that we list the date, the store, the uh, tender used, the total of course, return or purchase, and the character that it was for. On big shows, they like things broken out by character. On smaller things, you can combine. So you could buy for five uh, characters on one purchase. And to that point, you have to make returns based on the receipt. You cannot group multiple returns, even though they were maybe on the same card, on one receipt for big shows. For smaller things, you can group stuff, but you have to keep track of each buy and each return and they have to match side by side the receipts. And I know it sounds like common sense, but properly complete the form. I don't know how many times I have had someone help me with this and I look back and they wrote the wrong card number used, they wrote the wrong total, they wrote the wrong date. It's literally looking at the receipt, seeing the information and writing it on the form. It's not that hard. You just have to pay attention and focus. Every item that is shopped, we sticker it with the store and the date. That way it makes it much easier to go back and connect the purchase receipt with the items that were being returned. So then the return receipt matches back up with the purchase receipt. So we know, okay, we bought five things. We returned three. These are the two pieces we kept. We know exactly what they are. Receipts are gold. Receipts are money. Keep a meticulous eye and hand on all receipts, everything coming in, everything going out. Keep it organized at all times. Do not get behind as you will be extremely overwhelmed with the backup of receipts, especially on big shows and when there's big buys. It gets crazy with the amount of receipts that we have to deal with. All receipts are then taped to the form. Once the form has been completed. Don't ever tape over any ink because it'll make the ink dissolve on the receipt. And then the forms are uh, put in a binder in alphabetical order by store, by card, because sometimes we use two and three and four credit cards. By store, by date, by card. All three things, very important. Something else you might help with as a PA is shopping and returning. I pride myself on being a great shopper. This is what I love to do on big shows. There is a true art form to this. There is a lot of thought and planning that goes into it. It's not just, I had to shop and spend other people's money for a living. Although that is a major part of it, there is much more to it than that. For example, always plan your route when you are going out. You have to be efficient, right? So efficient with your time, plan your route. I typically always go to the farthest store first and then work my way back to what's closest to the office or base camp or set or wherever I need to end up. Before you even leave for the day to shop or return, especially if you're returning, make sure you have the item by bag with the proper receipt and the proper card. Do not leave the office or whatever, the truck, without those important pieces to do your return. Don't leave, get to the store, then realize I forgot the card, I forgot the receipt, I forgot the items. Ah! Use your head. Something else very important when doing returns, hand 
the piece, each piece to the clerk one by one. Never just dump a bag of stuff on the counter and expect them to deal with it because nine times out of 10, they will miss stuff. And again, every penny counts. If we are giving them back 20 items, we want to get refunded for 20 items. Do a mental piece count as they're going through, as you're handing them pieces. One, two, three, four. Okay, I handed them 20. Again, I wanna make sure I'm refunded for 20 items. All of these come from real life examples of assistance that I have had that leave for the day without a credit card, that go and do a return. And I know for a fact that I gave them five items to return. And I look back at the receipt and we've only been refunded for four. And then it's such a big mess and waste of time. You have to go back to the store, explain what happened. You ha sometimes have to call corporate, explain what happened. We don't have time for these extra steps. So just think, be present and focus so you do the job right the first time. When it comes to shopping, you may ask to find exact pieces from the designer. And sometimes you can't find those exact pieces. Perhaps they say, I want such and such piece from such and such store and you go there and you cannot find it. Well, offer solutions, be creative, think outside the box. Maybe it's something you could find in the men's department or if the actor's really small, you could buy them the largest size kids in a certain piece or, I mean, there are a million ways to get creative when you're looking for something specific that you can't exactly find. Um, you know, looking online, trying different stores, uh, just offering a solution, not just saying, I went to this one store to look for this one piece and I couldn't find it. The end. Give me something to work with. There have been times that I have used a blanket and we've turned it into a costume or we've cut apart pieces of you know different items and made them into something that's the whole part of design right like sure it might be something that exists in the world but it might be something we create out of nothing or out of parts of things or out of fabric of course or we paint stuff or manipulate or remove stuff or age and dye stuff i mean you know the possibilities are endless so get creative this is the fun part this is where the magic happens this is what brings the characters to life on the screen. You might be asked to wash stuff, especially if there's a lot of background. And I would say always triple check the first time around how the designer supervisor want it washed. Sure, it might be as easy as looking at the tag, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes they want something specific done or not done or dry cleaned or not dry cleaned. Just always ask, it never hurts to ask. And it's not a dumb question. It's better than something getting ruined and then you have a big fat mess. Bring your own snacks, bring your own water. You don't always get to go to set where Crafty is, which is basically Snackville, and take care of yourself best you can, you know, get some fresh air every now and again. It should be a really fun environment. Of course, there's stressful times and there's very busy times, but overall, I find film and the whole environment is just so much fun and creating and again bringing these fictitious characters to life. Costumes is in charge of bringing these characters to life through their wardrobe and that's how they express themselves, that's how they tell their story, that's how we might find out about their background. So I just love it. I love it so much. This is film. This is why I got into it and I hope you love it too. Starting as a PA is not a bad thing. There might be some tough days, but you will learn, you will grow, and hopefully you will be the designer or the supervisor one day. And you know what? It's also okay if you start as a PA and you're like, I hate this, this sucks. I don't wanna work in costumes. That's great. Then maybe try props or hair and makeup or art or set or try another department, lighting, grip sound. I mean, there's a million other departments you could try that maybe you will like film in a different department, not necessarily costumes, or maybe you don't like film at all. And that's okay too. That's why you've got to start somewhere, try it out, give it your all, give it your best, and then take it from there. That does it for another episode of Behind the Lens. Please talk to me in the comment section. I want to know if this was helpful. I want to know if there's something you want a clarification on, or if you have questions about something, or you want me to talk further about something. See you next time.